might be a little awkward this morning. I'm having to use a different camera and all that kind of stuff. So I'm used to using my phone, and which is a lot better, but I'm having to do something different. So if I look kind of awkward today, I look like I'm not really looking at you. It's because I'm kind of disoriented. But anyway, I'm going to do my best to uh, just uh, share with you and uh, welcome you this morning to uh, Morning Devotions. Uh, Pastor Mark Driscoll here, uh, Oakdale Free Methodist Church. I'm glad that you're here with me to uh, to listen in. But let's spend some time in the in the Word together. Let's bow together. Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that in all circumstances you are God, you are King, you are Lord and Savior. And Lord, we can trust in you for all things. Now, Lord, I pray uh, your guidance and blessing, Lord, this morning as we look into your Word. I pray that you would help us to hear what you have to say. Help us, Lord, to listen to you, to learn from you. I pray for every person that's listening today, that they would be encouraged and challenged today. In Jesus' name, amen. Um, Acts 13. How many of you today um, just feel like quitting? Have you ever just, I think, I feel like uh, we're, we have a lot of people among us who are just tired. Uh, been through a lot of things, a lot of struggles, tragedies. Uh, challenges, uh, you know, even the good things can wear you out. I mean, people who are who have been going through revival and having great things happen that can even be exhausting in itself. And uh, and it's very tempting to just give up and quit. I, you know, think about the Old Testament. Think about uh, Moses and the children of Israel wandering in the desert. It seemed like every time they ran into a problem, their cry was, "Let's go back to Egypt." Have you noticed? Every time they, they needed water, they needed food, they ran into a conflict, their first thought was, you know, let's just go back home, back to Egypt. Even if it was slavery, it was comfortable, it was predictable. I find that when people are in struggle and trial, that sometimes it's just easier to go back to a safe place, go back to what's familiar. You know, when there's a lot of stress, there's a lot of, uh, of upheaval, disruption, uh, God might be moving you forward to the next great thing, but sometimes when you get tired, you feel like, you know, I just need to go back home. Uh, a lot of people uh, think about revival as going back to a time period when things were more comfortable. And I, and I think that's where, where a lot of us are today is that when we think of revival or pray for revival, but what we really want is not revival. What we really want is to go back to what we used to do go back to what used to be normal, what used to feel safe. Um, and I, we see that in the story today. We're going to read in Acts 13. Paul and Barnabas and John Mark are on their way into uh, to their first missionary journey. Let me read. It's a very short part of this story. Uh, we read yesterday where Paul had a confrontation uh, with uh, a false prophet named Bar-Jesus. It was a powerful time. But it must have been unnerving, must have been exhausting to go through that. Then they get on the boat and they sail across to the next place. Let me read the story. It says in verse 13, Now Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. And John left them and returned to Jerusalem. But they went on from Perga and came to Antioch and Pisidia. And on the Sabbath day, they went into the synagogue and sat down. Now, this is just two verses. Two things happen here. First of all, uh, John Mark left. And we don't even know why. We don't know why, why he just turned around and went home. We do know that in the next journey, uh, John Mark wants to go again. And Paul's not too happy about that. And he, he says, no, you're not going again. Which means that, 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 that John Mark's leaving was not uh, something they agreed on. That he just turned around and left. And, uh, and so when you think about it, why did he do that? We don't know. We know that coming to Perga, they came to a very Roman place. And archaeologists have found, you know, city gates, um, a theater, a sports arena, all the Roman kind of stuff. And I wonder, you know, there's a lot of possible reasons John Mark could have left. We can only speculate, right? We could say, well, you know, maybe that whole confrontation with Bar-Jesus just freaked him out. And maybe that was just too much for him to take. And he said, you know what, I, I didn't sign up for this. I didn't sign up for fighting the devil. I just wanted to travel and preach and seek people get saved. But this is a little bit too much. Or it could 
be that he just got homesick. I mean, sometimes it's just as simple as that. He missed Jerusalem. You know, Jerusalem's where he apparently grew up, hometown. Uh, everything was familiar. He was used to all of it. Um, probably missed his family. Uh, you know, those kind of things. Maybe it was just as simple as, as, as just getting homesick. Could be that in his youth he was he was uh, inexperienced and uh, he felt like he was in over his head and he felt like it's just too much to do. Uh, I'm tired. Um, could be he was distracted. Maybe there was something at home that that he was missing. And not just homesick, but distracted, thinking about uh, things that he had left behind that he needed to tend to. Those kinds of things. I don't know. I mean, we can we can only guess why he went home. It was quite a long trip to return home, so he must have wanted to go back pretty badly. And I think about that, and I think, I don't, I don't know why John Mark went home. Uh, but I do know that many times when I want to go back to my Jerusalem, my safe place, there's a lot of talk in our culture today about going to our safe place. Everybody wants a safe place. And I, and I think there's some value to that. I think sometimes we too easily choose safety instead of moving forward with God. It says in the same passage that Paul and Barnabas kept moving forward. They kept going. And there's two things here that I want us to talk, talk about. First of all, if you're moving forward in God, listen to this, if you're moving far, forward in God, there's going to be people who can't keep going with you. I want you to think about this for a minute. There's going to be people who started out with you and they're not going to be able to finish with you. And, and that's their own issue. And we, we don't always know why. And, and that can be discouraging. I wonder if Paul... Now, Barnabas... John Mark was Barnabas' little cousin. And, and so we think, how, must, how did that impact Barnabas? How did it impact Paul when his team members start turning around and leaving? You know, as a pastor, uh, I've had times when uh, key leaders, important people that started out with me in the journey couldn't keep going. And they just quit. They turned back. I've had pastor friends who were co-laborers in the gospel who in the past year have just stopped and they just quit. And they turned around and gone back. Now, not all of them, but one or two. And that's so discouraging. It's so disheartening. It's easy when you're moving forward in God to get discouraged because the people that started out with you aren't finishing with you. And yet what we see Paul and Barnabas doing is they keep moving forward in God. Even though John Mark made his own decision, made his own choice to go back, you know, uh, people who decide to turn back, that's really their decision. They have that responsibility before God to make those choices. And sometimes you can't let that stop you from moving forward. That doesn't mean you don't care about them. But don't quit just because somebody next to you quits, just because somebody close to you turn back and, and they said, I just can't go the distance. Don't quit. That's the main message for today. Don't quit. John Mark, we don't know why he quit. Maybe you're John Mark today. Maybe you feel like turning back to Jerusalem. You're looking back to those safe, good old days when everything was normal, everything was manageable, and, and you got out here on the front edge of what God was doing. And many times when God leads us in faith, he leads us to places we've never been. He leads us to things that aren't normal. He leads us to things that can be frightening. Imagine the children of Israel back again in the book of Exodus and Numbers going into a place they had never known. Imagine Abraham when God said, I want you to pack up your things and take your family to a land that you've never been before. And, uh, you know, Paul said, I mean, not Paul, but God spoke to, to Samuel, you've never been this way before. And so there, there are places we go in God. If God is moving you in faith, he's not necessarily going to move you back to the familiar. And so some people who are praying for revival, what they're really praying for is a return to normal. That's not revival. Revival is new life. Revival is new frontier. Revival is new stuff, not going back to the old stuff. And so some of us need to understand if God's working in your life, he's calling you to something new. He's, he's calling you to a new thing. And so sometimes we need to ask ourselves, am I willing to step out into the new thing and go with, with the new stuff that God has for me? Or am I going to run back to what I'm familiar with? John Mark, for whatever reason, now, now I think the devil often tries to get us to turn back when 
and he sees us moving forward in God. He'll try to get us to turn back and go back to a safe place. He'll say, come on, you don't. this is not normal. This isn't what you're used to. You need to go back to what you're used to. Friends, the, the next move of God is not yesterday. The next move of God is what's in front of you. And so some, you know, God's pulling out. And so just because you're unfamiliar doesn't mean you're not in the right place with God. And so here's the thing, is that, that don't run back. Here's some of the ways that the devil tries to turn us back. Number one, John Mark uh, could have just been discouraged. Uh, some of us, we're not, we don't see the fruit we want to see. We don't see the results we want to see. And so we try and we try and we try, and then we just get discouraged and want to quit. Many a pastor has quit their church because they get to a place where they're just not seeing the results. And God doesn't call us to results. He calls us to faithfulness. And that's hard. Sometimes it's hard to keep planting those seeds when you don't see anything coming up and the ground looks dry and dusty and you don't see any sprouts and it looks like nothing's happening. But we've got to have a kingdom view and realize that God's God's fruit sometimes takes a long time to produce, but it eventually comes. And so we've got to be faithful. The other one is to distract. Sometimes we get distracted by the things of this world. You know, we, we, we long for companionship. We long for uh, material uh, wealth. Even if we don't want to be rich, we just want to make sure the bills are paid. And sometimes just the practical nature of material things can discourage us and say, you know, I need to stop and try to, try to you know, make a little more money or try to do this, a little, little of that. And, and so sometimes we can get distracted by these kinds of things. And sometimes... Um, we can get uh, divided. Sometimes division happens. I wonder if John Mark maybe didn't like Paul. <laughs> I think later on we discovered Paul wasn't too crazy about John Mark at that stage of the game. But we don't know. But we wonder what if what if what if uh, John Mark said, you know, I can't stand this guy. You know, he's driving me crazy. Uh, I don't like his eating habits. I don't like the way he talks all the time. I don't I don't like the fact that he wants to go after the, these these devil guys. And I, I just want to leave him alone. I just want to be comfortable. And, and he, maybe their personalities, or maybe family. I mean, Barnabas and John Mark were related. Maybe he's like, you know, I'm so sick of Barnabas. I grew up with him. I'm done. You know, he's just getting on my nerves. Sometimes division can cause us to want to go back to Jerusalem. I get tired of conflict with people that, I, that I'm dealing with. So there, there can be conflict. There can be disagreement. There can be discouragement. Uh, sometimes I'm just depleted. I'm just tired. You know, some of you guys, you're not doing anything wrong. You're just tired. Um, you know, you've worked for God, and you've been giving it, you've been serving, but you're just tired. You ever just feel tired? You know what? Let me, let me, we have to learn something. If you're tired, there's a cure for that. It's called rest. There, there's a time, and you don't have to explain to everybody. If you're tired, you need a Sabbath. You need a day. You need an hour, whatever, but you need to make it happen sometimes, and that doesn't mean quitting. A rest is a way to keep going, and so sometimes I need to give myself permission to rest. John Mark said, I'm tired of going home. Instead, he should have said, I'm tired, I need a break, and then I can, you know, so whatever it was. Um, and so what, what's going on with you today? I mean, if you're, if you're really feeling like heading back to Jerusalem, what is it? And, and the great news is you can bring it to God. And here's the other thing I want to I want to leave with this, and I love what happens later in the big picture. A lot of times we look at somebody's life and we see a thing they went through, but we don't see the big picture at the end. You know what happened with John Mark? When you read the rest of the story, you find out on the second missionary journey he wanted to try again. Which you know, kudos to John Mark for saying, "Hey, I'm sorry I quit. I want to try it again." We'll read about that later on, right? And Paul and Barnabas get in an argument about it. Paul said, you ain't taking that kid. Now, I don't hate him, but he ain't working with me. I don't trust him. And then Barnabas says, oh, come on, let's give the kid a chance. We'll talk more about that later. Of course, they divide up, and John Mark goes with Barnabas, and he doesn't go with Paul. Paul's like done with John Mark. He said, that kid is not messing up my next mission. But then, later on, you see John Mark's name mentioned in some of Paul's letters. In Colossians, he refers to John Mark. But in 2 Timothy... This beautiful thing happens. Years later, this is decades later, Paul is in prison. He's 
writing to Timothy. It's his last letter he will ever write before he is executed uh, by Nero. And he's writing this letter, and at the end of the letter, he says to Timothy, Timothy, send John Mark, for he is very useful to me in the ministry. Which tells us that John's Mark, John Mark's story may have started off a little bit rough. But John Mark um, didn't end badly. In fact, you know who John Mark was. Does anybody know who John Mark became? He became the writer of the Gospel of Mark. And so Paul reconciled with John Mark at the end of his life. John Mark rest was restored. And, uh, and John Mark wrote the Gospel of Mark. You know, just because you may you may be looking back and thinking about a time when uh, you were um, you left and went back to Jerusalem. Maybe you're that person who a few years ago you got discouraged and quit, and you're done. You wiped out, and now you're like, oh, why did I quit? Why did I quit? Here's the great news: uh, just because you started bad doesn't mean you have to end bad. That's the gospel. I mean, no matter who you are. Just because you started out rough doesn't mean you have to end rough. Because John Mark became a gospel writer. Now here's the thing. Um, what about you? Where's your life been? You might think I've made a lot of mistakes. I've got a lot of failures. I've hurt, I've hurt people. I've, I've made some bad decisions. The great news of the gospel is that Jesus Christ died on the cross to pay for those trips back to Jerusalem. He died on the cross to pay for those failures, those distractions, those decisions to quit. And He made a way for you to turn back to Him and come to Him and say, "Lord, I, I turn from that, and I'm sorry that I, I'm sorry that I quit. I'm sorry I gave up. But Lord, I'm back. And Lord, would you would you forgive me? Would you make me new again? That's the gospel. Whatever your your place is, Jesus died on the cross to give us a new life." To give us a new start, no matter where you've been. You might say, oh, pastor, I've been on drugs. I'm an addict. I'm, I'm hooked on some stuff. I've, I've had failed marriages. I've, I've lost my kids. I've just had all these things happen in my life, and I, I feel like I've just messed it all up. Jesus died for your mess up. Jesus died to make it right. And so if you put your faith in him today, You'll just come to him honest and say, Lord, I'm sorry for where I failed you. I'm sorry for all the mess. Now, Lord, I give my life back to you. I give it to you, and I trust in you, and I ask you to forgive me and renew me and help me start again. Listen, he can do that for you today. Will you let him? Will you trust him today? He's inviting you to come. So, so friend, number one, don't go back to Jerusalem, no matter how tempting it is. Number two, if somebody else has already quit, at your side. You keep going. And number three, if you've been back to Jerusalem and you regret it, you can turn back to God today. That's the gospel. He, he came to seek and to save that which is lost. And no matter where you've been, no matter what you've done, He can make it new. Will you trust Him today? Let me pray with you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I come to you and I ask God that you would give grace and mercy to those that are turning to you right now. I pray for anyone who's never uh, placed their faith in you, that now they would say, Lord Jesus, come into my life. Forgive me of my sin and save me. And Lord, that that person would find newness and new fresh life. I pray, Lord, you'd help us when we feel like quitting, when we feel like stopping. God, that you'd give us uh, grace and mercy and forgiveness. Now, Lord, I pray for your encouragement and energy and strength for those who feel like quitting today. May they keep going. May they press on toward the mark of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus because there is a crown of righteousness laid up for those who overcome. In Christ's name, amen. Listen, I'm, I'm sorry that today I know that it's probably a little bit staticky. You, I don't know how much you've been able to hear. Uh, we just, we'll try to have it in better shape tomorrow. Uh, but, but listen, uh, I hope that I know that God can use even this. So uh, if I can be of help to you, send me a message, let me know. Listen, God bless you.